I am the spectator. I am he who spectates. I scoured the universe in search of a very special card game. Well, I skipped the Crab Nebula because, you know, ew. But now my search is over. Ever wish you could share your love of comics and superheroes and collectible card games with your whole family? Now you can with Superpowered Smash Masters! It's your friendly neighborhood superhero parody card game. In Superpowered Smash Masters, or Spasm. Spasm? Can we say that? Inappropriate. In Spasm, you assemble teams of heroes and build decks around what your heroes can do. And what is it they do, you ask? Protect the innocent? Stamp out injustice? No, we go find some rival heroes to smash. Yes, because that's what superheroes do. Tell them about the hero cards and do it right. Uh, each hero has a special power. They can benefit your team or they can melt your enemies' faces. Right on. If your heroes smash all the other heroes, you win, punk. Don't call them that. The game's content is appropriate for kids. I mean, most kids. Not feral kids. Never hand your cards to a feral kid. Not if you want your hand back. Well, this is a parody game, lovingly crammed full of comic book cliches and pop culture references. Because we're nerds. The content's rated G. I mean, it would be if people rated card games. It's a deck building game the whole family can play together. Thanks for checking out our game. We're grateful for your support. Learn more about Smash Masters by checking out our gameplay video. Do it. Until next time, don't say it. Excelsior! Supremacy, neo-fascism, Nazi clowns, milk! Now more than ever it is important to remember the true meaning of social justice. Your life might just depend on it. Virtue Signal is a card game that parodies left-wing social justice activism. Here's how it works. In Virtue Signal, everyone roleplays as a different social justice warrior archetype. The base deck has eight, and each character has his own personality and unique activist superpower. The object of the game, then, is to attract followers to your character's cause, whatever that is. Followers attached to the character cards similar to dominoes, and the first warrior to have 15 followers is the winner. Pretty simple. Social justice activism is a contact sport, though, and things are going to get rough. While you're trying to build your coalition up, all the other players are trying to stop you, or even tear it down. The the most common way is by accusing you of microaggressions. A microaggression is a bizarre accusation against your liberal person. Investigations into your past, slips of the tongue, problematic hand gestures, or more than likely something that makes no bloody sense at all. When a microaggression is played against you, it besmirches your progressive reputation and makes it harder for your coalition to grow. Enough accusations and your growth can be stopped entirely. Just as in real life, or unreal life if you prefer, your wounded liberal reputation can be fixed through virtue signaling.
A virtue signal is an empty ritual of progressive piety that makes you seem like a really good person and which probably doesn't help anyone or accomplish anything at all. The right kind of virtue signal removes the microaggression and lets you grow again. For example, if someone accuses you of cultural appropriation, you can signal your way out of clown jail by wearing the kefir you bought in Palestine and wishing death by fire on the great Satan. Makes sense, right? Of course not. And that's the whole point. But wait, I can hear you thinking. How can you simulate what it's like to be a social justice activist when the rules of social justice activism are changing constantly? This game sucks, reported for hate speech. Well, it just so happens that we already thought of that, smart ass, which brings us to plots. Plots are global modifiers that change the rules of the game. Some favor particular groups, some favor certain players, some bring the game to a halt, and others bring down fiery Armageddon. And then there's also one that returns the game state to normal, if that's what you're into. Be gone, plot! There are also a variety of special cards with unique effects, such as stealing followers from someone's coalition, or forcing them to get a job, or triggering them so badly that they run away from the game crying. These are just examples. Some are even worse. Of course, all these emotional scars can be avoided if you remember to play your safe space card and crayons and a juice box, you big baby. And that's pretty much it. The game is strategic and competitive, and by the end, you and your friends will certainly be traumatized for the rest of your pointless lives. here oh wait you know what i forgot to play one more mo and if this is the right one um yeah i think it's the right one хочу покажу як кожен спортсмен піднімає вигляд покажи можемо почати з тирексу А, блядь, что я шучу, Aha, now we have officially started. Now how do I do this? Remove from studio. And it's me. Hello. And then I do this. Yes, we're here. Okay, Mr. Nino Towski. He's gonna have to go aside. Uh oh, it looks like I'm glitching a little bit. If I can see that on my end, then let me know if things glitch on your your ends real badly. I don't know how, how my memory management's doing. Um oh yeah, and I took a poll today. So now how do I show this one? Oh boy. Uh present. Did he share a screen? I know I have a window open with the poll. And is it, why is it not showing? <laughs> oh, I have to add it, add to stream. There we go. Yes. So what will I open tonight? Am I going to include, include just my chronological stuff or uh, add a box from Alterna, which is enormous. <laughs> so I've got all my chronological stuff like set up on a shelf. So it's actually all standing one end to the other. And then, um, 
mixing in alternative there's this gigantic alterna box and it's just taking up way too much shelf space and and so it would be like a month and a half from now so i better open it now anyway and then uh, do we want to mix in iconic instead of alterna but people voted for both iconic and alterna so thank you all 24 people who voted appreciate it and let's see do i where's the, where's my stop there we go yes i'm back all right i am going to close things look at what's going on with see if i can save up some memory all right <clears throat> so i usually tell little stories about jujitsu before we get going to just wait for people to show up but um so i got my first box here i have no idea who intellicor herlock is um so i don't know what's in here and, and i hope it's something that i actually still support and not something i tried to get a refund on because <laughs> i think there's another box down the line that that um is one i was not supposed to receive uh let's see oh yeah I keep forgetting to say this every time. So I really do appreciate you guys who look at the and the wrong one, wrong one, who look at the um which major the replay, uh, because I saw how many other people are streaming right now and probably stream regularly at this time. Like 80s made is a way more interesting channel than mine, at least to me. <laughs> I think like, hey, this guy's really interesting. I wish I could be like him. Um, so I appreciate everybody who catches my replays, everybody who's here live, even more so. I appreciate that. So I always forget to say this. Please, oh God, I had to write it down. Please hit the like, thumb, or dislike. Just be honest. Please subscribe. It makes me feel like I'm accomplishing something as an adult. And please feel free to comment on the replays or come back if you're that angry. And uh, remember to comment after you are angry at my live stream. Okay. Uh, did, did, did he, if all of your rage won't fit into the chat, uh, please hold it like a healthy person and come back and put it in the comments. Yes. Then please tweet about my streams. Not too much or people will figure out that, um, what you obsess over. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, check all the links in the description. I care because you do. So there we are. Uh, oh, sorry about the slam on the desk. I'm sure that's loud. Uh, did, did, did he... Oh yeah. My worst show. I have a note here. I think this was a note for a previous week. My worst show so far in terms of how I felt about how it went was with Battle Brick Road. And I'm glad like it got a ton of views. <laughs> it was terrible. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, that's a note from a previous week. I'll delete that from my, my file. All right, cool. So jujitsu today, <laughs> we have an obese dude in there while I'm waiting for people to show up, show me that you've shown up so I can say hi and then stop telling weird stories. If uh, you imagine like this is somebody on their, their, their face, this is somebody on his back like that. Um, but so we'll be off center a little bit. This mat, this matters because one thing, if you're the bottom guy, you want to trap that leg by taking your outside leg. Okay. And you put, bring it over their leg that is over their bent knee probably better like this. So your outside leg comes in, but then your outside leg comes, you, you scoop your foot underneath so that under their bent knee, you can get like this and you straighten their knee out and it can make it really uncomfortable. You can put pain in their calf. It's great. Just depends on where specifically things land. Um, and you can do stuff like that. Uh, if you're the bottom guy, <laughs> if you're the bottom guy over their bent knee, <sighs> <laughs> thank you mo that's why i tell jujitsu stories anyway so we have a dude and he's actually obese <clears throat> he went through some really bad stuff and just gained a lot of weight real suddenly but he's lost lost and gained weight before so he's trimming it off and all that but he's still obese he's still like uh sometimes a little difficult to work with because you don't want to accidentally have him fall on your leg and and stuff because he's heavier than a lot of people but anyway he uh as i was uh, on my back and mo's just gonna turn this into everything now him being, or, sorry, we just went through two weeks of things like how to finish certain submissions. Uh, and because, and what really helped me with those is how to get into those submissions, which I'll describe in a sec. But, uh, so here I am on my back and he was pinning this hip down and my left arm ended up, uh, he ended up getting a hold of it. Now I had already put him what's called a, a half guard lockdown. And that's the thing I just described where you're weaving, you know, over one leg and then over your own foot under his, his leg. So I already had him in lockdown and I was basically using it to annoy him into moving around so I could get some opportunities to, uh, you know, try like a different, different move to get out, out from under his what they call side control. Uh, cause normally side control is like this, but if you catch a leg and then you manipulate it and whatever. Okay. So he catches my left arm pins it down. And because I'm wrapped up on his leg, I can't rotate to defend my own arm. And he was so happy 
that he submitted me using what's called an Americana where you're like raising your hand in class kind of thing. And you twist the person's arm over their shoulder that way. So it's, it's not the Kimura, which is twist behind. It's like that. Um, so here we go. Mo is picking apart everything I've said. <laughs> I, come on, stream yards, hurry up. All right. Anyway. Um, he was so happy because we had just studied how to finish all of those. And he was very glad that he, he actually accomplished that with somebody anyway. So that was a nice day still getting my ass kicked, but it was a nice day. <laughs> so here I am on my back. He ended up uh, getting a hold of it. It, it was basic. Basically as probably, I probably, I always word basically it was basic it, it to annoy him into moving around so I could find some, and I knew you're going to pick up on that opportunities thing, Mo. You were so predictable. Anyway, um, I don't know where basic came from. Okay. Anyway, so it was nice to that. Uh, he was happy. He won. Anyway, uh, other than that, um, I'm not getting my ass kicked as much. I didn't lose to far better people in the class. <laughs> Look, I think this other guy's a four stripe, which is the top blue belt. If I'm wrong, he's a purple belt, which is the, the next thing up. And um, I'm just a no stripe blue belt. I'm, I feel I don't even deserve it at times. So oh, am, I, am I up loud enough? Yeah, I should be loud enough. Okay, so let's get to opening stuff. Um, the As always, the jujitsu and gym stories are always just to let people drift in. And according to the votes I was given, I will be opening everything I've got. So, oh, yeah, I've got this book down here. There we go the tapes open on one side but okay mm -hmm. i have no idea what this is what if it's not even a comic book anyway, i'm in a good mood i saw the physical therapist oops bump the microphone i have a microphone that had to be loud my counterweight anyway saw the physical therapist what a week ago thursday and to diagnose some some gate walking problems i have and wow i have a lot of things to fix so i am definitely going to get to be using things from this book to don't hit the microphone to you know little uh, there's a good one to show little weird exercises or whatever to actually i open, open to the wrong pages when when i need a, a good page show me something yeah here we go weird little exercises to to get yourself fixed up wow my i knew i was not injured but my knee pain has uh, been strange okay this has got to be a your boy zach thing i do not remember intellicor being his his name so well yes it's your boy zach we gotta get in there where are you knife <sighs> maybe i could use my knife hand to open this Whoa. Hey, Crazy Mad, I see you. Anyway, so I am glad to know for sure what's all wrong with my gait. And uh, one of my some of my previous surgeries are kind of messing me up. Is that it? Wait, I don't care about this cardboard. There we go. And um, throwing off how I walk, just bad habits over time. Paul says, hello. Come here, you. Just open. I don't want to bend the book. Yeah. I forget who drew this one, but of course we'll know in a second. Oh, yeah. And I was going to show more promo videos from Fun My Comic, but my nephew called <laughs> because his, uh, his apple died. I think this is just the cover. Yeah, it's just the cover. So we don't need to unfold that. It seems extra thick, though. Proceeds to unfold it. Is this okay? It's just really tall. All right. Yeah, it's just this cover. So thanks for the poster. All right. So here we are. Yeah, nephew called his Mac G4. I don't know why he's using one of those. Um, died. I will see if I can help get him an upgrade to something else that'll hopefully run all of his old software. I'm thinking get him on Snow Leopard and. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> that has the build in for all the old, uh, the old power PC stuff. So let's see, excuse me. <clears throat> oh boy. Okay. Uh, knife hand blind spot written by Richard C. Meyer art by Kenneth Lowe. All right, cool. This, this uh, issue is titled subtitled garrison. Cool. 
So I like watercolors. I really like watercolors. Let's see how this does. Okay. You know, my board here is upside down. There's a screw hole there. Oh, that's right. I think, isn't Knife Hand the one who doesn't talk? Oh, this may be an entirely silent book. I, I forgot about that. And do I need to move the camera over? There we go. There we go. Yeah. So what do we got? Zach will do anything to avoid using a bag and board. <laughs> I really like this artwork. This is this is cool. Uh, it'll make more sense when I read it. You get I find um when I listen to like bootleg recordings, like I used to have some bootleg REM on vinyl of all things. And because it's a bootleg and audience recorded, it has all that that different EQ, like it's it's just you know. Uh, somebody's got their thumb over the microphone type thing but after a while you get used to it and your brain sort of adjusts if you just listen to it a few times all in a row um and and then do, 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 what's mgs okay very mgs style i don't know what mgs is <clears throat> sorry Woo, everything's loosening up now that i'm talking anyway um i find that if i listen to a an album repeatedly like that i start to hear beyond the bad recording and i can actually start to hear some of the details that on first listen aren't there like i can pick out the bass player oh metal gear solid right okay i'm sorry yeah i should have known that um i can pick out the bass player if um even if at first you really can't and it might be through some faint like clicking or whatever but when i look at art like this that i'm not used to and I, I love watercolors, it's the same thing. I will, you know, at first sort of go, okay, this is how it's drawn. I'm starting to get into it. And then when I turn to a page like this and looking upside down doesn't exactly, excuse me, doesn't exactly help me. But when I don't know what that is right there kind of thing, although looking at upside right, of course, makes more sense on my screen. Um, by the time I get into the art, then things like this pop out much more clearly to me, much like lis listening for a baseline on a recording made with a, a handheld thing in somebody's pocket. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, living through the old bootleg era era was, was, I think, worthwhile. Things are too easy now. So. Okay. So we do have words in some places, but yeah. A silent story. Okay, sketch art by RBI Studio. Kenneth Lowe. Some pages we just went through. Okay, the many faces of knife hand. So they're all from different sources. All right, that's weird. <laughs> all right, Garrison Story by Richard C. Meyer and Chuck Dixon, script by Dixon. What kind of script? There was no dialogue. Dragon's Lair. Oh, this is very wannabe. 80s i think the color differentiation on here i don't know if you can really tell on the camera but the way it looks is they didn't just use colors from from back in the the strict cmyk or uh, sorry this the stricter color separation days um they made it look like it's printed on faded paper in fact yeah even out here there's that yellow and it's paper textured in the you know in between so I can see the texture through all the more solid parts as opposed to like the more detailed parts. But yeah, that, that fake paper texture is all over. So yeah, this has an artificial noise over it to make it look like an older book. Why not just make it look clean? I don't know. That'd be cool too. That's what uh, Russ Leach does. D -d 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 -d. A script can do... Uh, describe, yeah, I was kidding. Thank you. <laughs> but a script can describe actions, not just dialogue, right? 
So I'm happy this came through. It's been sitting on my shelf for probably seven weeks, <laughs> if if only that. <laughs> so, so very cool. Very cool. Yeah, good old style. I'm not sure what this story is supposed to depict, but you know, so I don't know who's who in all this, of course. We'll find out by reading it. So yeah, there's that's some good old eighties shaping with blacks. She looks very shiny. Neat. All right, that's that's kind of, that's getting a little Kirby esque up there. This particular airplane, gotta love that. So, speaking of which, my nephew who just called and had computer trouble, his the power supply in his his computer died, and it turns out I actually have a spare, so I can mail it to him. <laughs> cool. Oh, I like the the plain matte feel on this. It does have the creases where they're supposed to be, so your spine doesn't come apart. So yeah. Um, and it looks like it's doing its job opening correctly. Cool. Good print. So, yeah, I'm happy. Thank you, you boy, Zach, for coming through. Uh-oh, I didn't leave a place to put things. <laughs> yeah, I really appreciate um, you guys being here for my live streams and people watching the replays because... Um, me struggling with the ADHD and stuff, uh, having, having this, this to do every, every week, it gives me something really solid to work for. And, um, you know, to try and learn to balance a lot of my, my, the things I have to do better because I can read a book and then just do the review here, here and open a piece of mail. But then I can also go beyond that. And, and what I actually do is I try to mix books that are have bigger names with smaller names, whether it's mail that I'm opening or books that I review if I do more than one. So that way people who are here for the bigger name might see the smaller name, et cetera, et cetera. It's a lot of, I realize shows can be promo. So oops, there's the poster. Cool poster. Um, and so there's a lot of thought that goes into this. I had no idea what kind of, of pre um, Mo people voted for this. They voted for Alterna and this, and I'm doing Alterna last for a specific reason. So, um, but yeah, there's a lot of show prep that goes into this where I didn't know what I was getting myself into. And now it turns out it's kind of a good exercise for me. So I appreciate you all being here, making it worth my while to do this. Um, and I'm benef benefiting from it too. But if you weren't here, I would kind of wonder why am I spending my time? All right. De -de 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 -de. There we go. These boxes are so perfectly taped. There we go. <laughs> and if you don't know what's in here, I'll just spoil it now. There's a packing slip, so I got to get rid of that. Maybe on the top, maybe on the bottom. Don't cut myself. There we go. We know that's what you like, Mo. Love it. Love it, Mo. All right. Anyway, <laughs> quit antagonizing you. So down underneath all this is going to be a packing slip, but you do deserve a first look. The card was just laying on top. It's like all foam. And where's the packing slip? <laughs> all worried about don't dox myself, and it's like, where is it? <laughs> They're messing with me. Okay, I guess it's not here. Awesome. Oops. Whoa. <laughs> What's supposed to say? Haunted plantation. Sure. And a trading card. 
So advertisement as a print. Let's see what it says in the corner. Ride photo by, okay, limited to a thousand. All right. It says haunted plantation. That's uh, don't know what that is. And the card there, blur. Yes, I have not gotten a better camera yet. There we go. Maybe I shouldn't be a, be getting a better camera. Maybe this should just be a thing. Okay. Oh, two books. That's right. This thing shipped a few... Like, I got this in the mail four weeks ago, I think. Anyway, it's a larger box. I just wanted to get it off my shelf because it's bigger. Is this Weebery? Very, no, you know what? It's Weebery-influenced American comics. It is not full Weebery. It is... Um, okay, that, that just looks odd. But anyway... <laughs> This is a bonus book. I have no idea what it's about. Chibis? Yeah, that okay, that's Weebery. That is <laughs> Chibis are Weebery, period. <laughs> Speaking of Chibis, so Chibis have this weird proportion stature, but Lolly, apologies for getting the notice the full adult human proportions. <laughs> waiting for it to show up mo just remember it takes a while okay lolly um i saw some lolly and it is just a different proportion of stature and it's um a bit childlike and i was amazed that i saw probably the one percent of all lolly in the world that does not need to be thrown in the trash for being basically uh titillation you know to wrongly excite people so yes, it does exist out there, but I'm not interested. <laughs> so I took that other book, threw it over by my garbage can, and um, I am not... Oh, these are scenes from childhood, scenes from adulthood. Let's flip as many of these pages as we can. Uh, da, 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 da. Boom. Anyway, and yeah, I uh, it's still over there by the garbage can. Every time I take my trash out, I forget to reach behind the garbage can and get rid of the... the uh, perverse weebery there. Anyway, I had to stop backing Arc Athena because they kept sending it to my house in a box covered with weeb degeneracy. God knows what my mailman thinks. These things go to my workplace, so when I get around to that work site, I pick pick up my mail. Holy cow. I have the same I have seriously, I have the same notion like, uh-oh. Turns out some people are there are into manga, so I'm fine. But yep. It's Tim Limart. <laughs> And there has been a question about, you know, somebody asked me, <laughs> they, they pulled that fallacy this week on me to say, well, do you support Iconic? And um, I really wanted to, to, well, it was an afterthought that, because it was one of those things where instead of discussing the topic, somebody asks, well, do you do X? And then what they're going to do is a logical fallacy. It's, it's a form of ad hominem. It's not a pure ad hominem, I think, but it's some form where they they try to call you biased because they'd rather degrade you than talk about the topic at hand. And so what I, I really should have done is, uh, where is that? Do I have that? Oh, yes, I do. I should have said, instead of, you know, I called out the fallacy instead of answering it. But what I should have done is pulled out their books and said, you know, I backed both of your campaigns. Now run that same logic. It's pseudo fake logic that you're going to try and run on whether or not I support Iconic and run it on yourself. You know, because it goes both ways. So, <laughs> anyway, um, I love when people fall into fallacies because they're they're just dumb. So there we are. So yeah, this is a uh, Weaver. He's cute, the animal, the capybara. So that's enough of that book, even though it's thick. And uh, the torture continues. I'm going to try and limit this to as many as few <laughs> as many minutes <laughs> as few minutes as possible. Monster D was good. I've heard that. I like the art in it a lot. I've heard the writing is is well done. Um, I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I just mean that I do reviews. So, taking this thing, don't scratch anything. Blah blah blah. All right. Got my my little hook here. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. It's tearing right open. Check this out for people who actually like this stuff. So today's, by the way, that, that Alterna box is huge. So I'm definitely 
hurrying through the weebery. It's not just for you, Mo, but it is it is for you too. Uh, monster Museum is good. Mm -hmm. So there we go. How can I? Can you? There it is, right there. You can see my microphone, but I'm trying to show that this it has a foil stamp around it, which is pretty cool. They wrapped it. I am not into cosplay. This is beyond weebery for me. No. All right. Oh, feels good. So good to stretch. Yes. Oh. Right. Let's see what we got a little bit here. Okay. <laughs> oh, pinups in the back. Who cares? That looks like it's the end of the story. Yeah. Always breaking your hard covers. <laughs> Have no idea where this is in the story or what's going on here. I back too many books to remember everybody's synopsis. Forget it. Yep, more Weebery, but I don't see any degeneracy, just uh, Weebery. Mm -hmm. So, so far, we're safe. Yep. Do, do, do. Yeah. So, if anybody wants to come at me and say, oh, you support Iconic, and I will just show there, show them, and I supported your book. So, what's the problem? We got here. I wasn't a big fan of Monster MD. It was okay. I started reading it. Uh, the first few pages, and then got pulled aside to uh, to something else. So, Crazy Mad, did you like the backup story? He's asking you, not me. Because I didn't get that far. I have so many books I started and then got pulled aside. All right. That goes on the pile. Or no, wait. I should protect these like they're precious or something. So... Back in the box with you. And yeah, this box will be useful. Keep everybody really nice until I put them away properly later. Cool. So thanks, guys. And this also means I have bubble wrap. <laughs> they go through. Oh, wow. That was loud. They go through so much of this stuff over at Iconic. Okay. This is so big. I'm gonna need right, this is another risk of uh what do you call it um packing slip so here we go <sighs> did not check out the uh-huh he was hit or miss was he trying to hit you um i think he tries hard to be an edgelord with his writing does it, well that's his personality um I always wondered if when he's on stream, is he looking down all the time? Is that why his eyes are closed or something else? But, um, you know, everybody likes to be edgy because we all think we're comedians and we're funny. So it's not like he's that different. Hello, tape. One thing I really enjoyed about opening alternate packages way back in 2018 when I started buying Alterna um was you get you used to get not this time but you get uh paper like this and it's just tons of his newspapers from you know his local newspapers wadded up <laughs> and so it was like really cool to see like what was on sale weeks ago at, at his grocery stores <laughs> i know it's stupid but and that's me Thank you, everyone, for hanging out with me. So weeks ago, I don't know what's in here. All right, good. No packing slips so far. See? Here we go. <laughs> we got the coupon section. <laughs> Sorry, coupon. Awesome. Market basket for your dollar. Dude, strip steak was $8 a pound? Nice. If these aren't expired, if there aren't expired coupons in here, yeah. I wonder if I'd be able to like pass them off as my own here. So yeah, Market Basket appears to be his uh, local store. Cool. Oh, Mother's Day stuff. Oh, chocolate cakes. This is awesome. Yeah, fruited custard tart. That sounds. Uh, I love strawberries. All right. Very thirsty. 
So I don't know why this is packed separately. We will find out as we opened it. Um, excuse me. Careful. Okay. It's water, but you can see all the tea and chocolate stains in there. <laughs> I will go for here first. So weeks ago, um, ding. All right, I'm going to practice something. Weeks ago, I said that I was missing some Alterna books, and it turns out I was missing more than I thought. And then it turns out that the reason I was missing them was they were they hadn't been delivered yet. They were still back ordered, and they're or for me back ordered, and they're in this this thing. So ha, I can explain that more later. Okay, what I'm practicing is. Uh, Last week's uh, stream went for like three hours. I'm so sorry. And a lot of that was because I was trying to say things, but then I would just read the chat as soon as it came up. And I kind of interrupt my own thoughts and it makes everything take longer. So I'm practicing at getting out of thought at least halfway or you know some good stopping point before I read the chat. So I don't mean to be rude. Here we go. All this talk about coupons is reminding me of Leroy streams where he would unintentionally crack me up uh, talking about Menards. I don't know what Menards is. There's a lot I don't know, so should be no surprise. All right, so here we go. So what do we got? What do we got? Oh, okay. Trading card pack. Cool. I should have ordered like more than one. One to open, one to, you know collect on stuff like that oh wow so this is a FLIR ultra pro sheet holder not a card holder there we go oops i think it's a regional store in oh like Publix. okay or vons i think if you're in california i think vons is theirs uh, but every time he'd say it, I mean, he's basically saying Menards. Oh, <laughs> they have not run here. It's like a Home Depot. Okay, Menards is a hardware store chain in the Midwest. Right, my chair is worn out. I keep a towel on it. That's what I'm doing down here is moving the towel. So cool. So what? I'm always afraid of a packing slip falling out or more trading cards. Well, this is neat. Die cut trading card. For everywhere I've been and everywhere I go, like I should know stores everywhere and I just don't. So more trading cards. Cool. That one was expected. Okay. There's the other trading card. Cool, it's a cover. It's like a wanted poster. Beware, a creature spotted in the White Mountains. Do not approach. Pumpkin is seven feet tall and 400 pounds. Witnessed, witnesses describe a figure with yellow eyes and a, a crowned and caped silhouette with three fingers and three toes. Is that like two fingers in one hand and one finger on the other? Anyway, long beard and hair. Do not approach. Visit kingcrypted.com to learn more about this creature. <gasps> I'm going to... I should make a photocopy of this and, and put the photocopy up at my office. One of my offices. So. All right. So we, we've got the regular trading card and then the cover. Uh, on the back has a whole bunch of stuff. So this is looking at the cover. Read a little. Uh, it's a file. So paperclip number two, New England Cryptid Research Organization. So CRO or Necro, N-E-C-R-O, Necro. Fun. Okay. Uh, case file number 0019 and then other numbers. At approximately 1 a.m., a government vehicle traveling north on the... I need glasses. Like I just had to get repairs to my car. Oh gosh, and um, glasses are going to be like two hundred. So, oh. <laughs> by the way, I don't normally e-bag, but there is a link in my description for um, uh, buying me a coffee. <laughs> so there, I put my shame aside and said it. 
All right, anyway, 1 a.m., a government vehicle traveling for uh, traveling north on the, on the Spalding Turnpike was overturned near Ossipee, New Hampshire. And both occupants were, were uninjured. They, they what? Two large, they cited two large creatures of unknown origin as having been responsible for the incident. An animal tracker by the name of Victor Lugo was brought in to, to seek the whereabouts of these two creatures. Uh, Pop down to Menards. <laughs> I will. <laughs> Next time I travel up there, I will. Okay. Um, the, the, the whereabouts of these unknowns, having identified them as large humanoid moth hybrids, uh, known as the the Behi moth. <laughs> the B and the M are capitalized. Okay. Uh, this marks the first sighting of King Cryptid in over three decades. Several days into this search, Lugo was found seriously wounded. Oh and in need of immediate medical attention. They found him in, in time. Uh, he claimed to have been attacked by both the behemoth and King Cryptid. Currently, the whereabouts are un of both creatures are unknown. Oh, that's really cool. Neat. Trading cards could be fun. See? Guys, that's one. Take a quick glance at the other poster. Probably something we've seen. So, yeah. I hope I'm not reading too much to you guys. So there we are. Do it that way. Oh, I was wondering why it looked funny in my camera. There. You got your uh, lap hijab there. There we are. It's a nice blow up. Do -do -do. So there's a print. That's cool. This is some thick card. Is that two? Nope, just thick card. Yep. Portrait. Do, 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 do. Hey, Felix. Hello, the chat. Hello, the chat and panel. Okay. Now, if, if there's a lot more writing on the other, on the other, uh, I almost said credit cards, on the other trading cards, no, I won't be reading like all that detail. So these go in the back of um, one of those portfolio books that he sells. So that's what those are for. You can use them as bookmarks. But anyway. So we've got some cool trading cards. I thought there was going to be a shiny one, but I think I missed the deadline for a sign-up. I was not getting the notes to sign up for each next campaign, and that's why I did not end up getting certain trading cards. It's kind of sad. Cool. Set that aside. All right. <laughs> Ow. Oh. Ooh. Something happened, and like right in here, I'm getting pain. Five cards and one sticker per pack. Uh, base set is eight cards and one sticker. The following chase cards are randomly inserted at thir in 35 out of a 500 packs. Card signed by. Okay. Sketch cards, other 500 packs made. So to get all eight, I got to get a whole bunch of more of these uh, these card packs. I wish I had known that before. <laughs> Absolutely. Never leave out the epilogue. All right. Trust that to tear correctly. It feels like where this is indented to tear is is going to intersect with where the cards are so that's not going to tear correctly okay encrypted thanks for getting on that there we go so instead of tearing that i can feel there are no cards there i'm going to just go right along the edge there we go yep no cards were damaged and the artwork didn't tear either. I think this indentation was probably pressed in the, the wrong spot. So here we are. Hold on. That feels weird. Are you empty? Yeah, that's empty. Okay. They're all out. So we got... All right, they're all covers. This is the one I already read, number two. Uh, yeah, they're all case files. So there, this one's number eight. So no, I'm not going to go reading them all. This is the same as the big print we just looked at. So it looks like these are all from the covers. 
and then this is a sticker. So I'm going to bet that all these, instead of trying to look at all the cards, I'm going to bet they're all in here. Um, do, 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 do. Available for a limited time. Three days left. This looks more like one of those MRE reviews. Yeah, you know, I've had military MREs. <laughs> they, they do come like that. <laughs> All right, so now, because of the bonus cards I got, I have doubles. <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to have some words for Peter, like, can I order more card packs? How and where can I order more, more card packs? I probably have to go to the guy who made King Cryptid. And there we are. Just in case it's real gold, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep that, you know. Oh boy. So I think in French it's the pastry resistant or something. Do, do, do. All right. I feel like I just got duped by um, the dude who's taking off sunglasses and he's wearing more sunglasses underneath. <laughs> There's going to be a packing slip in here. I know it. <laughs> Careful. Gently, carefully. Well, I don't see the packing slip. It always sneaks up on you. Yeah, I'm not keeping, I'm not preserving this bag. We can go a little further. Don't hurt the books. figure out what we've got here <laughs> so i had previously ordered some of um the uh, oh it's a signed blank cover that's interesting okay sorry that had to be loud i don't recall ordering a blank cover but here we are so I think it's just part of the campaign. It's blinding, but yeah, uh, Peter Samedi signed it. So, yeah. Cool. Lots of covers. And I saw somebody else opening these. So if I'm not mistaken, yep, they flip. He's got barcodes on both sides. That is cool. So this, that's number one. Let's open up number one. Oh, this is some very nice, very nice feeling newsprint. Very clean. He's had some prints before where you get the the old, the um, old stuff in the margins. Maybe things get a little off or whatnot. This stuff is coming out clean. There's a little bit of red from the black overlay right at the bottom, the very bottom of this part right there. But everything looks like it's all meshed up and in line. Yep, a little bit of red overlay here. Takes me back. So yes, absolutely cool. Can't wait to read it, ads. <laughs> Not a problem. Small cop on Indiegogo. There, I did your ad. I didn't even get paid for it. I paid for this. So, awesome. Um, it looks like a stack. There we go. I'm never sure which way is the front. Oh, holy cow. Peter signed this one right there. I think that's Peter. I'm not wrong. Yep, this one's signed. Uh, 
Pencils and inks by Kier Kinvinson. Colors by Christian Ross. Words and letters by uh, Peter Samedi. Yep. Cool. Did he sign both sides? No. So Shelby Robertson had, you bring him up, he had this one, that blank cover is a Bancroft edition. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like the stack you'd get from Shelby Robertson. You know, it's the Bancroft edition because this is what he did. He designed it on his computer. There, you can see it now. He designed that on his computer right there because he's a graphic designer. It's the Bancroft cover. And, and look, he even did the back right there. Bancroft worked hard on this. Anyway, um, yeah, Shelby Robertson had that, uh, what was it called, a uh, auction a while ago where he ended up, you know, throwing on stacks of stuff. And there was one that, like, nobody reacted to, uh, but it was just some kind of troll or elf or something. And it was sitting with his feet out towards the viewer with I think a butterfly on his on his foot or something. I thought it was really cool. Um, de -de -de, there we are. That's the book after Bancroft has adjusted the K values to his liking. Mm -hmm. Yep. You can you can always tell Bancroft work. So uh, actually, the way this one printed, I think I can see. So can I see marker in there? Yeah, I see differentiation in the blacks on this one where you can tell there was marker used. Ah, cool. I always like that. Havoc by um, Crypto Comics Vault Kobold on Twitter. So he's a good guy. All right. So I got this one because I already had it and I wanted, I like Rob Willis's stuff so much, just like everybody else does. Yeah, I know. But um, I like it enough that I got a second copy and I'll take the more pristine copy and so that I can uh, bag it up and put it on the wall. I know. Sounds dumb, but that's what I did. And wouldn't you know it? The same thing with Preston Acevedo. So these two are basically I bought new pristine copies just just for the art. <laughs> Safe place there. So that's those. And then let's see what else we got. I see differentiation in the blacks. Listen to ver uh, blue virtue signaling. Oh. <laughs> Well, hey, I'm not the one sitting here saying that he likes his blacks separated out very cleanly. That would be uh, Bancroft, so not me. Anyway, Wolf and Batsy number four. That's the one I thought I was missing. Um, let's see, this is number five. Yeah, so these are from the, the ones that I, that I was... Ah, these are the books I was missing, and I kept noticing they were missing like only two at a time, and it just turns out I had ordered them so late they hadn't arrived yet. So this is all old stuff. Mr. Crypt and Friends, good stuff. Let's take a glance at that. I'm going to do two short reviews, then one slightly more involved, but only slightly. Um, cool stuff. Yeah, because my nephew called. I didn't finish reading the book that I wanted to do for the bigger review <laughs> by like 15 minutes. <laughs> but that's okay, because I'm not going to go to the end anyway. I love the Mr. Crypt stuff. It's It's the best. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Crypt, written by Troy uh, Vivasis, like I can pronounce everybody's name. Yep. What happens if I flip this over? Oh, that's better. Okay. So yeah, my gigant. Oh, Peter Samedi always sends out these little things that say, post on social media and tag us and you and we'll send you a coupon code um so i linked him to one where i opened his stuff before and then i took a photo or i posted on social media and included him um him and he forgot me oh i'm so i'm so hurt i'm taking it completely personally because <laughs> everybody forgets me <laughs> i'm kidding um uh, let's see oh yeah this is an older an older book um it's about an, an autistic kid who gains superpowers there's that. But this one, I kept accidentally buying dinged up copies of this. And I just wanted one that's really nice, even though it's not a first print. So. Hello. 
Yes, this was the most work Bancroft has done. Anyway, so I finally get my pristine copy to keep on the shelf and, and read nicely. Whereas uh, we had a, uh, a woman at work who was bringing her son in, and he's really young. So I grabbed a, a whole bunch of comics for him, including some Superman and this stuff. And that's why I got dinged up copies deliberately was so I could share those. And uh, man, he really loved them. He loved them for a while, and now he's over it because, you know, kids age. <laughs> We're just going to flip through some of the copies here. I had nice copies that were signed. I wanted reading copies. And I sh probably should have gotten reading copies of these guys. Like, like you know, already dinged up instead of this. Oh, same here. I needed some cleaner copies of a bunch of these. Because I really want to pass mine around and share them with people. So, yeah, I really enjoy this enough to buy second copies to share with people and then let's see we have a 96 page giant of unit 44 which was previously pub published as a graphic novel like like these guys but he's not whoop, there we go like these like this with the the square bound and it's a, a smaller dimension but he's not going to be publishing these anymore Okay, now I went for, so yeah, um, I'm not flipping through these because they're older and it would take forever to get through every single one, but let's look at this guy's art, if you haven't seen it before. So Mighty Mascots, they are um, cereal box type mascots and other things that have come to life through a scientific accident and we just get some adventure out of them. I've read the first three, I really enjoyed them. I'm on the second three right now. Gonna glance at some artwork. Yep, good, clean, fun. I appreciate the fact that these are written where, as an adult, you can you could just say, you know, there's no guilty pleasure. It's just fun, and the kids, it's total for kids, is totally accessible. So, or really, it's for kids, but it's adult accessible. Is the way to look at it. Yep. Yes, it was recent. If you consider 2016 to be recent, <laughs> so no, I, it was a trade paper back of the rebirth era. I'm only giving people good stuff. So anyway, no, oh, don't flip too fast. Slow down. And then unit 44. Or let's pick a different way mascot book. Oh, that's number one. People have probably seen that. I have another one here. I'm trying to handle them gently. Here it is. Number two. So, good storytelling. I can't believe they th they threw their rebirth success away to bring in Bendis. I know. And I read the first six issues of Bendis, and then I repented. Um, uh, I sold them off. Like I, I seriously got rid of those. Which way? Uh, too close. Let's go that way. You know, seriously, too, too, just horrible what he did to the character. My idea for bringing DC back would be, uh, super, and it fits now because they have Superman like way out in space, would be um, him and Mixelplex get into a plot out there somewhere. I was originally just thinking, just do it this way, but them having him in space is convenient. So, so Superman has to go out in space for whatever. Um, he's trying to fly by yellow stars to keep his power up and, uh, he and Mixelplex get out there and there's some, uh, criminal villain doing things that have to do with time. And, uh, when the bomb goes off and there's a tachyon burst affecting Superman and it makes its way across the universe, we just erase back to so many good places to erase to and have a good reset like the end of peter tomasi's superman that's a good place and literally if i were running dc i would go back to action comics a thousand and just delete the other one because it's you know they can do a thousand cover b although i think a thousand had like 20 covers on it but you just do we're going back to issue a thousand and we're erasing the history of all that crap do that and do it for each different character i don't care where you have to go back to uh for batman because batman i think survived i i missed a bit of this 
but the flashpoint that started the new 52 I, th I think batman somehow retained a lot of himself through into new 52 somewhere or something about that or but or coming out of new 52 he remembered who he was from before something i don't i don't know but that gives us a lot more places to reset with batman and just erase so much crap and if creators cry about it i don't care I, I mean, I really don't, but if I were running DC, that is something I would do after firing writers who do agenda, you know, so Mark Wade would never get hired again, etc. You know, you can't trust them. Uh, and, and it's the same thing with art, with uh, artists. You can't trust them not to, sne you sneak things in, you're, you're gone. You know, I don't want that crap. So oh, remove from stream. You forgot to get rid of this there we go just looking at some art and storytelling so lots of words okay moving on so thanks for sticking with me through all that all the jujitsu stories okay ah uh, look it's another alterna book <laughs> Peter Simidi's web store, Painted Heroes. Huh. Excuse me a minute. I'm going to click on that because I haven't seen it. Oh, for King Cryptid. Okay, yeah. Cool. Thank you for that link. I'm going to see if I can get more trading cards. <laughs> try, and make, try and make whole sets. But Exilium is going to be related to the book we're going to look at mainly today as far as I've gotten into it. And so that's why I wanted to open Alterna last was if you've been on Alterna, you've seen the Exilium title. This was a really good book in terms of, so it's the first of the four we'll look at. And this is going to be a quick flip. It's a sci-fi great concept, great uh, ending. I appreciate the artist. It's written by a guy whose name I can't pronounce. Ben Slabak or Slayback, S-L-A-B-A-K. All right. That's the um, how, how to pronounce Slayback. That's where the title for this comes from is I don't know. And in my head, I keep saying Slayback. So this is a six issue series and he's picked it up again with some sequel stuff. Uh, you can't get this version anymore on Alterna and Ben Slayback's uh, website is currently down for maintenance when I looked at it later. But as always, there are links in the description for the guys I'm talking about tonight. So Slayback had this story. This story was awesome. Um, it's about a future humanity trying to survive and they've been taken over by aliens and then how that all happened. And they're trying to w wage war against letting the aliens invade. And this alien you see here is not one of the invaders. He's one of the other, the, um, the aliens who have invaded earth also conquered his planet previously. So now he's with them and stuff like that. So it's a really good story. It's a good read very engaging. I think it was six issues. If I'm wrong, it was eight, but so uh, anything on the back. Yeah. And I think Exilium, I think is the name of either their spaceship or a, um, Oh, I forget what the name is. I'll, I'll quit guessing. I don't want to say anything wrong. So there's Ben Slayback's site up there. Hey, thanks for finding that link for uh, Peter Smetty web store painted heroes for, uh, so we can get King cryptid stuff there. That's cool. So with Slayback in mind, I am a Slayback or Slaybach. I'll get to this in a minute. This is Amosa. So, and why I pronounce it funny, I'll talk about it later. So uh, what's his name? Uh, Steve, not Steve. Rock SWPA on Twitter. Anyway, uh, da -da -da -da. That's why I call him the Link Master. Okay. Are you the gatekeeper? He is the Link Master. Yes. All right. Anyway, um, or the bookkeeper. He, oh, what is his name? I can't remember. <laughs> he's another guy who who sometimes does openings and stuff. I don't know if he's around much anymore. Uh, I hope he is. And uh, he told me because I was looking at some American mythology books. That's the brand up here. Uh, there's an AmericanMythology.com link in the description. That's about it. But they are available through your local comic shop. The uh, their whole brand is. And if you look at the the um, previews world website. That's the diamond catalog. They are in there too. So they do crowdfunders. They, um, but to put out the same books, they put these books out through diamond, um, and where I pre-order them and whatnot. So 
uh, this book in particular, American Mythology Monsters. There's now a volume two, volume three. Each volume is three issues. And... <laughs> I shouldn't have put that up. <laughs> anyway, thank you, brother. Like, yeah, that's what I like to see. People clinking. Okay. Um, putting this up. There we go. So these are in black and white. They are not cheap in terms of the artwork. I think the artwork is perfectly fine. Yes, those are breasts. The f but each of these is a three-story. Oh, come on. Come on, little cover. There we go. These are three stories. The bite parts and uh, satiety. It's an anthology. All of these are part one of three. So unless the page counts don't add up to get where we can have uh, one story in one issue, because maybe it has an extra page and then another story, a shorter page and stuff like that to make it all even out, this really could have been done where they just put in one story and it's a different story every issue and be a linear anthology rather than these overlapping. The way Dark Horse pre uh, Presents used to be, which is an old Dark Horse title from the 80s, they had them overlapping like this, but some of them would be four or five part stories and some of them might be two. And so you you really had to read along every month to pick up with your story and then there'd be other, you know, as an anthology like this. So when every story is the same length, it doesn't really make sense to split them up where you get a third of each story. But the editorial control is really good on this where uh, you get your eight pages, let's just say it's eight pages, and um, and it has to have a good ending before you go to, you know, a good place to end like that. Uh, so he's going to sleep with this woman and she turns into a werewolf. Um, that's amazing. So uh, then you get your next story here. So I've read so far because of just time constraints and stuff like that. I've, I've read only the first story of all three issues. So here's issue two. There's issue three. They do the all, the variant cover thing, but some of their variant covers are more expensive and limited. So, there we go. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, yeah, Dark Horse Presents was hard to follow. Yeah, because <laughs> because it's broken up like this. Uh, so you have to to wait, and it, especially with the overlapping story lengths, it, it can be like, well, now I have to buy five issues that have one story I like and nothing else. So thanks for posting that. Okay. And we'll get, this is, Amosa is not a typical comic book. And, and as much as I mispronounce things, we'll get to why on that later. So I read this story and it is about um, an absolute scumbag. It's this guy who is complaining to himself that he got caught cheating on his wife. Like it's everybody else's fault that he got caught. So really horrible. Um, he's a professor and one of his students whom he slept with goes public. So he loses his job to flee from all the backlash before it comes out. He, he literally flees. He doesn't go into work the day he's going to be fired because the student messaged him ahead of time to say, this is what's, you know, this is what's going on. So his wife knows his, uh, his, his workplace knows, and there are more that there's more than one student. So total scumbag absolutely in denial, completely self-righteous, decides he's going to flee and go to a vacation spot um, where he picks up a particularly uh, interesting prostitute uh, and as a way of preserving himself. And then, on to the next issue. <laughs> so, uh, and for the black and white, this, this art is perfectly fine. He wakes up the next day not exactly seeing what's going on and wondering, you know, what's happening has to go back to the States. And, um, you know, it's just still a jerk in denial, self-righteous all the way. See, see something turns into a werewolf himself, uh, not realizing what's happening to him. And then that's where we cut. He, he has now, Oh yeah. And the way the story is told, we get a little bit of a preview of the mayhem at the gas station where it all happened at the, somewhere in here. So that's him waking up. Um, somehow this was foreshadowed. I just forget how exactly something was. Yeah. Something was for, there was foreshadowing used in here. That's what I'm trying to compliment. So um, I forget exactly how it was foreshadowed, but it was all right. So, and I read these like last Monday. <laughs> so, it's because it was like reading one floppy. So he um, gets tracked down and caught in uh, for being a werewolf, essentially. Wait, am I on the right pages? Hold on. 
So she turned him in, into a were werewolf through biting him. Yeah, the bite part three. Okay. Through biting him. He becomes a werewolf, gets hunted down and caught, and is basically just deserts thrown into a jail cell to be studied by the feds. Um, so it's sort of a morality tale, like don't be a jerk, ju you know, justice is coming, whether you like it or not. So that was good. I liked this little story. Yeah, so the formatting, eh, you know, as far as putting it in three books instead of one, I think that could be better. Um, yeah, what else is there to say? So that was good. I haven't read the other stories, don't know how they are. So that you see the variety in artwork here. This is much more sparse line art, almost cartoony. And whoop, see what we got. Oh, yeah. And then here's the, the more grayscale art for the mummy story that I haven't read yet either. He should have ran, should have run. It's have run. He should have run into his own doppelganger who began to talk and sexually harass him. This could, this could call it me too. <laughs> Stalk. Okay. He should have run into his own, own um, doc who began to stalk and sexually harass him we call it me too time travel werewolf doppelganger yes that would be perfect so american mythology is not doing shoddy work they are doing some good work um but these are black and white books for four dollars i think yeah four dollars on 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 these covers so that's my pitch for american mythology i hate to call it a pitch i have to read zoro's uh, they just put up a crowdfunder for all three of these, and I'm waiting for my number three to, to arrive. That goes there. That's not American mythology. So they have a volume, volume two, and a volume. That's the volume two right here, a volume three. Um, they're not doing shoddy work, and I can't remember his name. Rock S W P A. Um, crap. Anyway, he recommended them, and he was right. Where are we? We hit my throat's feeling like we're hitting an hour 16. Holy cow, and I haven't gotten on the main book yet. Thanks for sticking with me, guys. Okay, let's show you they have other titles. I need to read this, I'll tell you how it was. Oh, they also pr reprint some really old Zorro stuff. So, the first real review tonight is still going to be brief. Um, I'm going to do a synopsis like I usually do. Somebody told me to do a synopsis and they told me that I summarized or something. They got it backwards. This is my point. Um, I saw the sign up for number two on this, how to die. Number two, there is a sign up for it. It should be in my description. And if you scroll down far enough, you'll see links for like a ton of stuff I've had on and then um, a link for a tip jar. So anyway, um, <laughs> I hate saying that. Uh, the alcohol. Okay, dry off. Uh, Joshua, who put this book out, also did uh, Norlam. And life's getting a little bit better. I finally got my follow-up to Norlam posted yesterday. I filmed it in mid-April, <laughs> just so you know. I am trying to get a lot better at getting my campaigns out. For example, I am supposed to... Where to go? Uh-oh. I'm supposed to review many, many books. I was going to show an example of that, and um, I'm just not good at organizing my life. So anyway, and by, I'm sorry, I should do a pre-recorded review for many books. And one of them was here. It was here. Nope, I guess I'm wrong. Okay, it's not here anymore. Um, I hate it when I lose books. <laughs> so uh, the I really felt like I didn't give Josh a fair shake because I left out how to do better. And so uh, here is How to Die. Yes, please sign up for his number two. I liked this book. Now, somebody else warned me that you see my microphone in there. <laughs> um, he, somebody else warned me that How to Die was an attempt to combine Camus' existential nihilism. We're getting heavy in here. <laughs> okay. Actually, I, let me adjust the camera a little bit. And yeah. There, now we see the whole book. Um, Camus' existential nihilism with a superhero. The existential nihilism is not a big happy thing, and the superheroes are always big happy things, so they don't work. So this book doesn't work, and it's, you know, he failed. And I'm going like, well, I'm, I'm going to read it anyway, and I totally disagree. I think that there is something you could look at as, as existential denialism, or sorry, existential nihilism, not denial. <laughs> I think the book worked and I'll tell you why. So uh, the thing is, I have never read Albert. I've never read the stranger or any of Albert Camus. So I don't know Joshua Plonk. Thank you for signing my book or Plock. 
Thank you for signing my book. I like how he had to conserve some pages in here. And so this is in fact a page from the book <laughs> and uh, it is a foreshadowing of something that comes later when we start the actual book. Yeah. Okay. I'm not skipping a page. We see a boy sleeping and his dad. So there's this. Um, and it's, oh, wow, I wonder how that relates to this tall guy. So here's his dad, wakes him up, and they pick up a hobo to serve the hobo a campfire um, cooked meal, you know, just, just to show his son generosity or whatnot, and then pulls out a gun and just kills the guy. And then they bury him. Um, that is messed up. <laughs> okay. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I, I am keeping that one. Existential denialism. I'm not even supposed to be here today. <laughs> so, and this is what the son learns is kill somebody. Uh, you know, so there's the dad's hat making a shadow like bullhorns. The hell is that? So then, and the, the dad talks and lectures, and this is where some of the philosophy might be because the dad is getting tracked down by the cops who found, you know, found the, the murder and whatnot. And the glowing eyes here, if you can't see him under his hat, his, his eyes are glowing. So, um, and the cops end up killing him. Uh, and then we flip to some hobos, which is this scene right here. So they're all drinking and talking and through their conversation, they get to a point where suddenly one of them turns into this monster and then kills them, and he's talking about his dad. So this monster is the child that we just saw here. Okay, now Joshua said his 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 own first book was meh, you know, okay. So I'm going, all right, you know, scenes kind of disconnected, they reconnect, got it. And then, uh, let's see, you're never more than a few missed meals from barbarism. Uh-huh. <laughs> so better tell the uh, U.S. government that. <laughs> They're not going to do well. So here we just jump to some guys working in a video store. The store is closing. We get two different takes and his boss on how to do things, prepare for the future, live life, etc. cetera. Um, he's, here's the boss. He's talking with a girl. There, sorry, through here, he's, he's talking to a girl, a uh, girlfriend. He's on his headset. Um, actually, I wonder if she's a prostitute at one point. But anyway, I got a little confused because I fell asleep reading this. And then, you know, that's normal. <laughs> so. Josh, let me read a PDF of this. I wasn't a big of a fan of the art, but I was impressed with the dialogue. Yeah. So um, the, the conversations all lead somewhere. And so that pulled me in too, was what are they talking about? Our main character, and I wondered, is this the dude with the beard? He's just shaved. What's going on here? Uh, I did wonder, wonder that through a lot of this. And so, you know, what is this and where are we going? But it didn't push me away. It, it, I actually wanted to see what they were saying and wanted to make sense of this guy because he's not going to look for another job. He's not looking for other income. He doesn't care that he's going to lose his apartment. He's having disagreements with people about it. Very peaceable disagreements though. And so he, his coworker finally leaves him alone and they go their separate ways. And it turns out that somehow they never knew that they live in the same apartment building, <laughs> whatever. Okay. Um, so he meets this chick. They talk, there's more there. It's all very interesting. Um, it turns out she gives out samples, not, not, is not a hooker. I thought she was going to be a hooker. Uh, and then at the end of this, so we get through all that. And why is he just giving up on life? And, and that would be the, the um, nihilism. Well, this creature comes for him, who is our, our kid from the campsite grown up. And apparently our nihilistic dude has powers himself. So, this is not, uh, and here he is trying to get away to be continued. So the whole reason, you know, try instead of getting into this despair, the whole reason he's leaving his life behind is because he's got something else going on that he's not telling anybody. And so to me, that was a good way to, if this is Camus existentialism going on in the rest of the book, I don't know, but it's a good way to go from there and transition into, oh, this makes me want to read number two. Not like I'm totally cliff hung on it, but like, now everything suddenly clicks and makes sense. The character um, is not what we thought he was. And it all works together at the same time. I actually thought like this book's fine. Like I, what, 
<laughs> so I didn't understand the objections to, to this book being it's existentialism in a superhero and you can't do that. It's like, no, his whole, it, to me, I'm sorry, the way it read, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Josh will correct me on this. Uh, Josh never talks to me, but um, if I'm wrong, fine. But to me, it was the whole reason for all the, the weird behavior was he's keeping a secret identity. Like, <laughs> that's not a problem. <laughs> so, all right, put this away. So that's my really quick synopsis as review in order to make the review make sense. Of course, I always have to give spoilers, but there we are. So there's that one. So I'm two books down. Now we get to this one. Different kind of comic book. Give me a moment. You know, I need a moment. Let my throat rest for a sec. I'm going to get water. So while we're doing that, dee, 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 the hooker gives out samples. I'm saying I anticipated wrongly about what she was. <laughs> All right. Um, dee, dee, dee. hope I don't lose you for a moment. I am going to, I don't know what these are because they're all black. Oh yes. Okay. I'm going to actually talk about another book before this one, but we'll get, while I'm here, while I'm out, give me a sec. Braid of the White Leopard, book one, is the story of a band of Vikings that get caught up in a storm and wash up on a mysterious island. Written by Edwin Acevedo, the writer of The Ace, with art by Avery Butterworth from The Lost Pages. Back at today on fundmycomic.com. All right, that was quick. So I read a book that I want to promote, and I think I forgot to put the link to it in... Um, in the uh, description, but it's called Conquest of Happiness. And I'm the only backer over on, um, thank you, Felix. I'm its only backer over on Fund My Comic. So I should have, unless I'm screwing everything up, totally possible, removed from studio. This should be the promo for it. That is not the promo for it. <laughs> <laughs> Take two. Our world crumbling under the weight of war, pollution, and disease. As a desperate solution to save humanity. Two brave souls are sent towards the dark depths of space. In a conquest. Of happiness. Will the solution bring solace to a dying society? Or will it be humanity's final breath? Conquest of Happiness is a 32 page black and white one shot comic book illustrated by Yitzel Lemons. Conquest of Happiness is now available on yetsolemons.com. Physical copies are printed and shipped near you. Get it now. Okay, so um, I got my copy. It's over on the shelf waiting to be opened, and I don't want to say too much about it. It's only 32 pages. It's a very fast read. The thing is, it's also very simple, and you might be like, why did Blue promote this? It's that it stuck with me for a couple of days. So I think some of the things it touches on are thematic. Um, I, I know seeing people with, with uh, breathers on their face is not something we really care for right now, but... Um, it's not just societally thematic, but I think it touches on, on themes having to do with what does it mean to be a man in order to do whatever the characters do. And so I think in some ways that also relates a little bit to uh, how men are fathers. And it doesn't go into long explanations. There's very little dialogue in it. The whole book is narrated. In fact, there's almost no dialogue in it. So, uh, oh yeah, he has a YouTube channel. That's cool. Okay. I'm going to have to remember to put that in my description. So, uh, there, but there, oh yeah, he also did an, another book, which is Crimson something or other. Is this it? Yes. 
are very very adult. Revenge of the nerds. Leisure suit Larry. In the tradition of these great franchises about <laughs> aspiring men and women trying to get places while dealing with the hardships of life, we present another milestone in comic book history. Crimson Skies. Okay. Um, I don't know if that's glitching for you, but it was for me, so I'm gonna presume it, it is for you. Uh so he has bigger he has he has bigger books and they're they're um they look funny. <laughs> Let's just say that if he's like Ghostbusters and Porky's, um, as my my older brother saw Porky's in the theater, got in trouble for it. But he was he was of age, uh, and he's and he's like, well, it was funny as anything, but it rotted. That was that was his his take on it. Was you know moral rot, but hilarious. Anyway, um, so Yitzhi Lemons he drew this book. It has heart, and that Conquest of Happiness book stuck with me uh, because I got done and I was like, well, okay you know, that was fine. I liked it, but it was fine. And then the next day it was like, huh, that really does matter. You know, that, that, and I, I actually messaged him and I told him that at the end of the book, I wanted to laugh and cry at the same time, you know, tear up a little while I'm laughing and not tears from laughing. So I don't want to give away too much on it. Um, but yeah, it's got levels in it and I can't put my finger on all of them. So I think it's a really nice read. So spend your six bucks on the PDF or uh, 16 to get a hard copy shipped. And that's not 16 plus shipping. It should, for me, it was 16 with shipping. So uh, I read the PDF. I'll open the, the other one later after people have time to, to buy it. And uh, and yeah, it, it was just cool. So it's one of those where you go, okay, that's cool. And then just put it on your shelf. Like you might never go back to it, but it was worth reading at least once. So there it is. All right. So, it, and it's not God, God's gift to comics either. It was just very interesting. So I don't want to oversell like that. And then uh, let's see, remove from studio. I'm not going to use Crimson Skies. Uh, present video file. I'm just preparing for later. De -de 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 -de. Reverse peel. Okay. So I'm ready to get out of here when the time comes. Uh, I do need to get time to work on my intro. My apologies for not having that thing edited better. The clips you do see need to be shortened. I found a clip. Um, it was actually really easy to track down of what's his name? Tom uh, Stoltman, the two time, uh, what uh, two time world's strongest man destroying a wall in a gym because he's running with a, with a tire. and He just, just bashes into the wall. It's great. Eddie, uh, Eddie, I can't remember his not last name, not Eddie Bravo, but, Eddie, the one with the stinkiest farts in the world, he's on that on that video. Um, so I put out a promo this weekend saying I'd look at a big book. This book by John Slay or not John Ben Slayback, and as you can see, it is big. There we are. It is also only eighty pages. Oh God. <sighs> He should use your pull quote on his next campaign. You'll read it once and put it on the shelf. It's not God's gift to comics. I know. Okay, here's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> is I'm afraid of overselling something that um, people are going to say, why did he even promote this? And I promoted it because it touched me. It was good. It touched me in a good way, in an appropriate place, on the top of my shoulder. Just so you know, Meg. Or not, or Mo. <laughs> I bl blended your name. name, Mo Biggs, Meg. All right. <laughs> Anyway, so I'm afraid of promoting something that might be bad in a lot of people's eyes, even though I think it was really good. So, it, you know, when a book sticks with you for a couple days, it's worth it. All right, this book. So here we go. If you don't know, and you probably don't, uh, Ben Slayba Slayback is a uh, an archaeologist. In fact, the thumbnail for this stream is a picture from one of his, his campaigns. Uh, he does have two campaigns going on Indiegogo right now. They're in in demand. You can get this book and then his Mr. Beaver trade paperback on which you can add two other floppies that he has going. So that's all available. Links are in the description, as they say in this one. And here's a, another photo of him down there uh, working in Egypt. I, he is an Australian. And so after I read Exilium, okay, where are you? In the original publication for Exilium under Alterna as floppies, full-size floppies, not, not oversized, 
uh, he ha they had ads for some of his other titles, Tale something or other, I forget what, which I keep forgetting to order because it's expensive. Um, so every time I remember to order, I really can't afford it, <laughs> like right then. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, and after my car repairs this week, it's 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 going to be hell. Anyway, um, but they had ads that included his website. So I looked up his website. He's got other books. I want to read his back issues, stuff like that. Um, you know, and no, reading his back issues does not mean getting his x-rays. <laughs> Beat you to the pun. Try that, Mo. Anyway, um, th so he's the guy from here. But he's an archaeologist. So his fiction is aside. In this book, you know it's a comic book because you open right to, oh my god, that much tech. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so I've read, because uh, you all know I read in bed. I've read, let's see, is this four pages or six? Pardon me. Yes, yeah, just four. So I've read the first two pages for sure, and then I think I had to put it down and quit somewhere after I turned the page. Uh, what he's doing is taking something... Everybody looks at the uh, the Exodus time in the Bible or whatnot, because we got that movie they play every Easter <clears throat> for Passover. And... Um, pardon me. <clears throat> there we go. Uh, this is about... The, this. The scenes depicted in here are about 900 years later, I think, because... I think the Exodus was 4,400 years ago, and the, that gives us like 200, uh, 2,400 BC, and this is uh, 1550 BC. So, oh man, I'm so sorry. I'm trying to lean away from the microphone for that. But so he's taking characters that there's not a lot of history of, and making a story to fill out for people what it was like. And he's made the decision to go for the king. They don't say Pharaoh, which is interesting. Uh, but they say king, and yet with the, when the kings speak, they still speak of themselves as an incarnation of a god, which is what the pharaohs were. The pharaohs were the highest priest of their um, their religious sect and believed to be a, a reincarnation of their of one of their gods. So, all right, anyway. So um, he explains a bunch of that, and it's all very interesting, but don't worry, I'm not going to read it to you. Uh, May 2021. So he puts the book out. What's going on is... Uh, along the Nile, let's just say the Nile Delta is up here, Mediterranean Sea is off the, the table, and then you got the Nile coming down. Um, Hisox, H-Y-S-O-K, they, they've moved into the northern area to the point where they've taken over it. Uh, I've read worse. Not actively, it's not actively terrible. Ultimately did not decide to refund. <laughs> I never said those things, Mo. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'm trying too hard to not overstate, and this is what happens. Okay, I I really like the book. Buy it, and if you don't like it, sorry. <laughs> All right. Anyway, but so most of the main Egypt has now been put into a kingdom that's further south, and they have other people to deal with south in Kush and Ethiopia and whatever's down there. So, um, and Ethiopia being a people group. Why am I getting hungry? Anyway, um. So that's the setting for this. That's what's going on at this time. And this quote whoop, right here, which I will read, is in fact a quote from a known papyrus. All right. So when the messenger of King Apophis, A-P-O-P-H-I-S, maybe PHs back then are Apophis, I don't know, but we'll say Apophis, reached the prince of the southern city, he was taken into the prince's presence. Then Sek N <laughs> S-E-Q-E-N-E-N-R-E -E -E, said to the messenger of King Apophis, why have you been sent to the southern city? What is the reason for your journey here? The messenger then told him, um, it is King Apo Apophis who sent me, <clears throat> who or who has sent me to you to order, uh, in order to say, let there be a withdrawal from the canal of hippopotamuses, which I think is what the animals are named for, not the canal name for the hippopot." A muses, all right, uh, which lie at the east end of the city because they do not let him, uh, they do not let sleep come to me either in the daytime or the night, end quote, for the noise of them is in the citizens' ears. Then the prince of the southern city became stupefied, and this is the one they call king, prince of the southern city, stupefied for, uh, for so long a while that he became unable to render a reply to the messenger of King Apophis, an excerpt from Papyrus Salier 1. And so how he opens the book is we get this landscape and that's all really cool by the way i'm blatantly recommending this the first scene is us seeing that play out 
he's trying to to use a comic to fill in um what what we wouldn't have known from the scant you know what i'm sorry from the scant archaeological evidence that's there we don't really know a lot so he's trying to fill in what life would have been like surrounding certain known events Oop, there we go uh because why not you know why not those events are known and so this is his way of sharing what we know about egyptians and placing it into there with uh, the best a fictional historical fiction he can do there you go his storytelling technique i think is really good and his artist helped him out a lot uh, I got to remember later to show where he shows something so that when you see it later, you know what it is. And, and that's really cool. Uh, that part, I highlighted that. All right, cool. So here we go from the king's throne room. This is the messenger in the beard, and he's being threatened by one of the guards, and the king is thinking. All right, and we get out of this scene where the king's two sons, which are without an H, Kamoza, and then Amose. I say that because in other archaeological things I've listened to where they say what Moses's name was to the Egyptians, it's it's something about Mose at the Mosa. And I don't know how to say it correctly. It's not Mose like a Y, um, but it's it's a softer um like like Amosa type pronunciation. So I'm reading this book with these two names in my head, Ka, Ka Mosa and Ah Mosa. So there you go. Anyway, those are the king's two sons, and here they are. The younger, Amosa, being without the shirt, that is, he's just got the collar on, and then here is Ka uh, over uh, with the uh, blue collar, and, and he's the older, he's the inheritor. They go to school, and we're getting to see them talking about politics, so their school teacher talks, or sorry, pulls out a map and starts talking about the history there. It's a bit of exposition, so we get the setting, and it teaches us what's going on. All right, so you got to put up with exposition at some point. And then the brothers go on. Then we are taken back to the throne room where a decision is made. And then we change scenes. So this, we, it's, I like how the characterization is done. By the way, if you catch me uh, saying character development, me, when what I mean is characterization, call me on it. Because characterization is how you're showing the character to the audience. Development is the, is the change as the character goes through. But uh, so here, out of his throne room, he gets to be a father. He's teaching them archery. We get a lot of thoughts here about parents having children that comes up later with the with the mother to these kids and then we change scenes a few weeks later uh the town of and he gives a town and here is another father with a younger son a much younger son and his wife and so we get the story of what's going on with with this part of history from the point of view of a soldier in the the um in the army and he talks about how he chose to tell the story he talks about in this part how he decided to tell the story this way, breaking us up over two different settings, two different protagonists on whose shoulders to be on. So uh, the concerns for the kingdom are that it's being hemmed in. The Hisoks have taken over everything in the north. They've got people to the south to conquer. So they conquer the people to the south, incorporate them into their army. And now I'm going to start moving really quickly. Uh, I like the storytelling technique. I think that he does a good job of showing us how the king's whoops i may have jumped jumped ahead too too far no no i pardon me did i jump over an entire battle no i did not okay so they go off to battle and it's a good job of showing how the the king's op overconfidence gets him killed spoiler <laughs> whoopsies so he gets killed and then his son has to uh take the throne and it's a huge battle scene uh, I think the artist did a nice job where they're showing, they, they do some good things to, to show like these cowhide shields and the clothing is different. So you can definitely tell teams apart on who's on whose army at different times. Um, like this is an Egyptian and then there's the king. So all the characters are kept straight kind of nicely. Visually it works. He got a good artist on this. Um, let's see. Um, but ultimately the king is killed by the people they went and attacked in the north. All right, so he comes home, and then also the other soldier is wounded, comes home and dies. So now we, you know, we're getting this from both points of view. As the story progresses, his heir, the older son, is uh, growing up and whatnot. Funny, by the way, there is an error in the artwork here. Here we see the king's wife, the mother. There's the heir, the older son, and here is the younger son. And she's talking about what he's going to have to do as he grows, and he's king now. All right. But in the next frame, the next panel, excuse me, 
the younger son is asking a question about his own participation. He's wearing the wrong shirt. So artwork error. He's supposed to be wearing the gold collar and, and uh, otherwise uh, bare torso. The heir to the throne is the one wearing that shirt. So a little mix up. Uh, so yeah, a little mistake. And uh, I like how the, the story is told in parallel as, as he ages. And it's told well with a suspense that you wonder, is he going to be so over anxious that he makes the same mistake as his father and gets killed? Uh, at the same time, we see the younger brother watching this, Amosa, the younger brother. By the way, the little boy, the soldier's son, has the same name, Amosa, and they actually bring that out at some point. So right when you get confused about like, well, wait a minute, why is everybody named the same thing? No, the two boys are named the same thing. And then eventually they do, after a few years go by, they do take a mission to the north to get into battle. And that's as far as I got is they win portions of the battle. And then where's it going to go from there? Because the the new king and, you know, leading his brother around still has way too much confidence, even though he planned things very well. So it's interesting, but this is not a superhero comic. Like this is not uh, telling, you know, there, there are, I, I like the way he wove in, sorry, keep interrupting myself. I enjoy the way that, that Ben wove in a characterization so that we can see and wonder about who the characters are and what they're doing and stuff like that. Let me, I'm looking for a particular frame. Excuse me. Uh, da, 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 da. Yep. It's right there. Okay. Uh, the, the med J A I are at the ready. Okay. So uh, he wove in characterization so that we do wonder, you know, what's going to happen to these characters. Are they going to make the same mistakes? It's good to have a cathartic motivational character where we learn from their mistakes. And that's what the first King was. So I can see why he would want to write about that kind of thing. And as a writer, we see, uh, we're getting into the thoughts of the both mothers as they're watching their sons grow up and go and go away. Like uh, the widow here, the soldier's widow is seeing her son go and play with other boys while, you know, and he's a little bit older, of course, while uh, the heir to the throne and his little brother, Amosa, as opposed to this Amosa uh, are, going into their, their battle and whatnot. But another thing he does well as a writer is, is as we're getting through uh, the, uh, the Prince Amosa's thoughts for narration here, he points out who these guys are, that they are at the ready. And why does that matter is because visually they show up later in the battle. And if you don't know who they are, when you see them in the battle, you're, you're going to be confused, you know, like who's this guy, what's going on here. So I think he does a nice job of introducing what he needs so that we can follow the story. So it's a well-written book. Um, not finished with it. My nephew called. <laughs> so, so there we are. Uh, that's, uh, I do. And I'll just, I'm not sure what all exactly happens at the end. And there is a part two. So I know this is only the first half, but man, Ben Slaybach did a good job of drawing me in uh, and, and making me interested in what's going on, even though, this is not a hero's journey. This is this is more uh, a, a, a historical fiction that's meant to present history. It's really cool. I like the book. So that's that's the synopsis and, and some of the details right there. What he does well as a storyteller. That frame right there, it gets used later. It's like they say in writing film, you got to show it first and then use it later. He does that. So yeah. Hey, thanks everybody for sticking around. Uh, let's see before we go. Um, was there anything else? Oh, Let's see, we're hitting an hour and 45. I wanted to talk a little bit about campaigns that are on Fund My Comics. So I'm not going to dive deep into that. Um, what have I got to show here? Dee -dee -dee. This story goes on for several more volumes before the descendants of these characters sue Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is so perfect. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm just going to share screen and I have a window. Oh, I hope my computer doesn't crash. <laughs> Got to move it over. So add. Thank you so much for that. Mo Biggs. You're my one watcher who's still here. <laughs> so <laughs> my little thing said one, I bored everybody to death or some, a, a better stream started, whatever. So this is Ben Slaybox's site. Um, obviously it's down for a bit. He did do, he does have stuff on Kickstarter. And so notice he's got an exilium and these are, of course, his Kickstarter. These are all closed. These three all went to Indiegogo, but then, um, I, the, the, uh, exilium new parts closed. And so he is on Indiegogo. 
uh, this book is still in demand. That book is still in demand or is still in demand. I'm going to get it. And, and cause I think he's just a good writer and he's doing good things with his artists helping him. Let's see. We've got uh, American Mythologies website. You can order back issues here. So if you're into Edgar, Edgar Rice Burroughs stuff, and they think they build on and expand his universe and not just, re, not just turn it into comics. Um, how did I sign up? Yes, please get on that. And then uh, let's see what I found. Okay. Arrow. We got Fun My Comics. So yeah, lots of stuff on Fun My Comics. Please go over there. I don't want to break, I don't want to go past two hours on the stream. I appreciate your, anybody who's coming back for replays and stuff, I appreciate your attention. So uh, there is a game on here, which is cool. And at the beginning of this stream, I did play, I think it was the first one I played was the video promoting this game. So this is done by Justin Sweet, who did the Chrome Dog book. And the game actually looks pretty cool, but they have another game. Because if you go to Fund My Comic, it's not just comics. You can go to all these things. And I think I have some scripts blocks. So if I go to, uh, let's see, card games, load, join. Okay. For some reason, some of these buttons don't work for me. I think that's my fault, not the site's fault, because I have some script blockers going up in the corner. Um, so don't 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 hate the, the site on it. But I saw a new game here. This is hilarious. It, it is a card game based on NPC woke virtue signaling stuff where you're all trying to destroy each other while building followers. <laughs> and, so, and I did play the promo earlier in the stream. If you go back to the very beginning of the stream, it's in there. Uh, it's probably the third one. Anyway, it looks hilarious. I think this looks absolutely hilarious. So let's see. We got banned from Kickstarter, banned from Amazon, banned from Game Found, sites I haven't even heard of. Uh, let's see. Uh, banned from Quartermasters Logistics, banned from BGG, banned from Google, banned from Your Life, and banned from Reality. I don't know if those are true, but it it looks hilarious. Please check it out. Anyway, we got, oh, yeah, there it is. See, so it's under games and back to, okay, so with Arrow Distribution, they're putting out mostly right now, they have, they're, they're distributing stuff through the crowdfund campaigns of, of their books. So if you go to their site, primarily what they have i have not looked at spank uh don't want to anyway this goes back to the liberty distribution stuff where some of these were in the original liberty distribution pack that came out of there and then you can find um whole packets of like six to eight comics in waves on some of these campaigns from arrow and I know some of these books were in the first wave, which is why I didn't get it, because I already had them from Liberty, blah, 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 whatever. And then the rest of it, until they, they build up their archive more, the rest of this is going to be, um, can't move my mouse over, is going to be mostly Luke Stone's hybrids all the way down. So there's that. So when you go to fund my comic and you see a campaign uh, and it has those little packets in it, uh, the place you want to go in the future, whoops, wrong one, is strangely, it's arrowcomics.store, not arrowcomics.com. So I kept going to the wrong one. Anyway, so Ben is on here, showed all those off, told Luke I was going to mention Fund My Comics, so I just want to keep my word. And um, yeah, before I, I'm sorry, after I, I peel the, or I put the orange back together, I'm going to definitely play one more promo. And let me see if there's anything else. I keep windows open to remind myself. No, I think, well, what's this one? Do, 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 do. Oh, yeah. Okay, but I don't have to talk about that. That'd be a waste of time. I just have other campaigns open, and, and I'll talk about them more later. So, oh, one thing I have talked to Luke about, and he said that they've suggested it, and it would be um, in their, in their uh, it's on their to-do list, essentially. Let's say we go into comics, and I, th I felt this was kind of important for people in comics is the best place go to comics and graphic novels. They, Oh, they have manga. How terrible. Anyway, comics and graphic novels. Uh, you might see some books. I think there's one book that's in graphic novels, but not comics. And then, and then almost none of the comics are in graphic novels. It's pretty short, but you can sort by, yeah, I'm tutoring on how to use a website. The problem I ran into was we've got newest and oldest featured. Let's see. Most and least funded, most and least funded by percentage campaign progress and random. What I don't see is closing soonest because newest would be opening most recently, but I would, it'd be really great to get these arranged. And Luke said it's, it's in the works. So it could be like months off because they have other priorities right now, but 
oldest because they all have different closing dates isn't the same as what's going to close really soon. And then some campaigns are indefinite, like they just go on forever. Uh, no, no closing date. So this is 306 days to go. Uh, let's see. There might be more. Let's see, what's, uh, There's one with a no closing date in here somewhere. Um, do, 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 continuous campaign, no closing date like that. And so this one, and a lot of those are second chance. So anyway, that's something I wanted to point out was try to get an eye on uh, the comics in here for closing dates. Keep track of those. The way I do it is I keep links and then I rename my links with the date, the closing date at the front end of the link. So they're all in order. Okay. Anyway, there's a few good words for fun. My comic, if you want to try it out and then uh Sl Slaybog will be back on Kickstarter and he does follow-ups on Indiegogo. So try to support him there. Uh, hopefully Amosa number two will be out shortly. Uh, let's see. What are we sharing? We're going to, this better be the right one. I bet it's not. That's the right one. Add to stream. Yeah. Oop. Whoa, what happened? <laughs> I screwed up. I gotta remove. Okay. There we are. Thanks for being here, everybody. Thanks for watching on the replay. I really do appreciate it. Um, have a good night. Take care of yourselves. Cheers. Oh wait, I just saw something. Yeah, I'll I'll show these while we go while we go out. Bye bye.